Hello there, and welcome back to the clouds, or welcome to the clouds. If you are new here, my name is Dre, and this month, the month of May, is EDS Awareness Month. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. So for those of you who are unaware of what EDS stands for, we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about what causes it, what the symptoms are, and what it is. So let's get into it. Now EDS, otherwise known as Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, has 13 different types. The type that I manage is HEDS, otherwise known as Hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And that, my friends, is the one that we are going to talk about today. HEDS is a condition caused by a mutation in a person's collagen proteins, making them unstable and overly flexible. Unlike the other types of EDS, scientists don't really know the gene or genes mutation that is responsible for causing the symptoms of HEDS. So that means that there is no DNA test to find if you specifically have HEDS. So it's a combination of making sure that you have striked out all of the other conditions that could be causing your symptoms. Diagnosis of HEDS is based on a person's medical history, family history, and a physical examination. And to be diagnosed with HEDS, the person has to reach a certain score on the Bain scale. Now, the Bain score is equal to the amount of answers that you answered positively. The patient's age will decide what the score is that they need in order to pass the HEDS Bain score. If you are a prepubescent, adolescent, or child, the score that you must reach on the Bain score must be 6 or more. If you are a teenager all the way up to the age of 50, then your score has to be 5 or more. And if you are over the age of 50, your score must be 4 or more. This right here is these questions that you need to be asked and pass in order to move on to the next step of being diagnosed with HEDS. I will go into more detail on this particular test in another video, but for now we are just sticking to the basics. So we're going to move on to the symptoms of HEDS. But some of the symptoms, including the ones that I have and ones that I don't have, include the following. Joint hypermobility. This can include large joints like your elbows and your knees and your shoulders, as well as small joints like your tiny ones in your fingers and in your feet. Another common symptom is frequent dislocations or subluxations. A subluxation is just a fancy word for a partial dislocation. Still hurts a lot. <laughs> a characteristic of a person with HEDS is commonly stretchy or overly elastic skin. And usually, or sometimes, or most of the time, the patient also has soft or velvety skin due to the mutated collagen that is used to compile the skin. Another symptom is unstable or loose joints, and that leads to the subluxations and dislocations. Chronic joint pain, obviously, because of the poor stability. <laughs> Fatigue is also a very, very common one. Everybody, basically 80 to 99% of people, and this is also on the source that I will have listed on, in the description box below, but it says 80 to 99% of people complain of extreme fatigue when they suffer with HEDS. Now it's important to note that everybody's experience with HEDS in particular is very different. It has a huge variety. For some, the condition can be relatively mild, and for others, it can be borderline debilitating. Now, I will also mention if you or a person is just simply flexible or hypermobile, you have double jointed knees, whatever, you do not e experience any of these symptoms, you're not in any pain, you don't need to worry. You don't have HEDS, I would imagine, um, because usually HEDS comes with a plethora of awesome symptoms that make life not so normal. So you have nothing to worry about, you're just flexible. I did also wanna mention that HEDS and just EDS in general is a very underdiagnosed condition. It is thought to be rare, but personally and through articles that I've read, a lot of people believe that its rarity is due to the fact that it's extremely underdiagnosed. The goal of today's video is not to spread sadness or pity or negativity. It's just to spread awareness because this condition is somewhat complicated and very much misunderstood. A lot of people have the misconception that you have to be flexible to have HEDS, and that is very not true. You can have certain areas that are hypermobile and not very stable. My shoulders are a great example. Both of my shoulders and my ribs, five to my upper ribs, one and two, are 
not very stable at all. I'll probably get a dislocation or a subluxation in my ribs probably once a day at least. And then my shoulders, I'll probably dislocate it or sublux it or it'll be misplaced, <laughs> as weird as that sounds, probably two to three times a week. Um, sometimes less, sometimes more. It varies. I used to be very flexible in dance, but as I've gotten older, I've lost a lot of my flexibility because my muscles have learned to keep everything together because my tendons won't. So it's, it's complicated. But the moral of the story is HEDS is not just about being flexible. It's not just because we're flexible and that's the end of the story. HEDS causes a lot of suffering because our bodies are just not structured the way they should be on the inside. However, we look perfectly normal, quite healthy even, and that to a certain degree is maddening. I would imagine that a lot of people would think it was it would be crazy to want to look disabled or to look differently um, when you have a health condition, but sometimes I can picture a lot of situations where that would make things helpful. Um, it is rather draining to have to explain every aspect of your condition and limitations and pain to everyone you associate with in order to have the expectations of you shifted or altered due to a lot of the limitations and pain and complications that this condition does bring along, as well as the fibromyalgia that I also mentioned. It is difficult to alter people's expectations I'm not asking for excuses, but I'm asking for realistic expectations. And that doesn't always happen when I look perfectly normal and young and healthy. I am 24, turning 25 this month. The amount of things that I can't do that a normal, healthy 24, 25 year old girl, woman can do is mm, discouraging sometimes. And I don't know about you, but I'm not a huge fan of advertising that <laughs> but also if I don't then people don't know and then I'm pushing myself beyond what I should responsibly for my health and for prevention um so much of HEDS is prevention and just doing the best that you can at the time and taking it day by day although HEDS is not a degenerative condition as you all know, the human body ages, and if it has to work extra hard to do simple basic things, the aging process will increase or speed up. And because of this, many people with HEDS will run into early onset arthritis. Um, they will need joint replacements, like a knee replacement, a shoulder replacement, a hip replacement. Some people will need it early as 30. And many, many people don't understand that even though HEDS is the least severe of the other e EDS types, it is still a huge burden. Not to say that the others are not, and you know, we are very blessed to have the least severe, but we would feel more blessed if we didn't have to cope with this every day. Just having somebody know exactly what it is that I'm dealing with, just even just a scientific facts will take so much pressure off of me and off of other people who also struggle with this condition. Because feeling like a different species among humans, because the way that my body works is so different from the average person. It just, it's not the same. Lack of education in general in the medical field for EDS and HEDS in particular is baffling. To find a doctor who even knows what EDS is, is next to impossible. And when you do, you have to pay $3,000 for a down payment before you even see the doctor for a consultation. It's just not right. And for people who are borderline functioning or mostly functioning, that's just not fair. Due to the fact that this condition is considered rare, it's often referred to as a zebra condition or a zebra diagnosis. And many people who actually do clinically have this condition are not diagnosed or not diagnosed properly because of the huge lack of misunderstanding, miseducation, or just lack of education in general with this particular condition. And there is this common phrase in medicine, when you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not zebras. Now, 
I have had a plethora of, for one, incorrect diagnoses, and two, almost absurd diagnoses, or a sad excuse for diagnoses. I've had everything from when I was younger to growing pains, from my extreme discomfort and joint pain, to generalized pain. I don't know about you, but generalized pain doesn't even seem like a legitimate diagnosis. It's a symptom. I don't know... I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> I went 24 years not knowing what was wrong with me, for one, why I had pains that other kids didn't, why I couldn't eat a single meal without just terrible stomach pain, and why at the age of 20, after 10 years of dancing, stretching correctly, exercising, doing everything that I should have done properly, I found myself in a wheelchair for almost a year. That's not normal. And let me tell you, a diagnosis of HEDS earlier in my life would have made the biggest impact. I can't even express to you. Even today, with armed with the diagnosis of HEDS, finding a doctor who even knows what that means is next to impossible for a consultation for them to tell you what you already know because you have had to do the research yourself and basically find the condition that you have on your own because nobody understands. And on top of that, also, managing fibromyalgia, another obscure and very misunderstood condition. It really does feel like I'm just a different species trying to get medical attention by another species that just doesn't understand how my body works and what I'm saying. I'm speaking another language to these people. It's just, it's so frustrating. Now, I honestly made this video in hopes that I can spread the word about EDS and HEDS in particular, since it is what I struggle with, in hopes that somebody that can make a difference will hear this. It's not about attention. It's not about pity. It's not about sadness. It's not about empathy. It's about understanding what we're saying and what we're going through. I don't expect you to completely understand what my daily life is like, but I, I at least need somebody to know that it's different. You know, HEDS and fibromyalgia are both invisible to basically everybody but me and maybe a couple of my doctors because they see the dislocations and the subluxations every week. But on the outside, I look perfectly healthy. I look young, I look vibrant, I look normal. But on the inside, I literally, in the most literal way, am falling apart. And things are not always as they seem. I find myself trying to brush things off, trying to brush off my symptoms and make them not as consequential. It's not a big deal. Oh, it's, you know, my rib again. It's fine. But just one day, I want to have one person understand that it's not fine and I'm not okay. But the reason why I say that is because I'm terrified of being a burden. And these conditions, HEDS and fibromyalgia, they have a ruthless tendency to make a person feel very lonely and unheard and invisible because all of our pain and our perspective is invisible to everybody but, but us. And many of us have gone from doctor to doctor, each of those doctors telling us it's either in our heads, it's not real, or it's something else. I was open to the idea that it was something else. But that something else was like acid reflux or growing pains. Things that would not explain why I had subluxations every week. That just doesn't explain it. I'm sorry. Moral of the story is, we truly do not know what the other person is going through. And we never will. But what's important is that we consider that. We consider that there are things that we cannot see, we cannot tactically feel, that that person is going through, potentially daily. And it could be the hardest struggle or the hardest trial of their life. And just a smile, just a wave, just helping them with their groceries, could literally be the deciding factor of whether they decide to keep going. Thank you so much for being here and for taking the time to understand things that many doctors, even, 
have not taken the time to truly understand. If you guys would like to learn more about HEDS that I didn't mention today or just about EDS and its other types, I have some awesome sources down in the description box below that I used for this video as well as just sources that I think you might find interesting. And seriously, you guys, thank you so much for being here today. It really does mean so much to me. Although today's video was much more serious and emotional than uh, my usual videos, you can visit my sister channel, Palmchi Productions. It has lots of DIYs, product reviews, etc. that you can check out. That's it for today's video. I will leave you with this as always. Resting is not laziness, it is medicine. Have a great day, you guys. Bye!